Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Welcome back to another video. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about something that I haven't breached on my channel ever before. And that's because I haven't had experience with it. So uh, my husband and I are expecting our first child in December. We are super excited. Um, it's, yeah, it's a great time. It's exciting. But it's also a bit of a weird time because... Um, with everything that's going on with the cost of living crisis um, we've, We really need to be strategic in thinking about how I can take maternity leave So we've been planning and talking and thinking about the best way to approach this I personally wanted to be able to take as much time as possible um, With the baby once it gets here by the end of this year. So that is 12 months or 13 months if you tack on your annual leave at the end um, which is a, a lot of time you know in comparison to a lot of countries I'm definitely grateful to live in the UK but um, yeah it does mean that you have to be strategic and think about is this something I can do and if it is what do I need to do in order to be able to achieve that because as you probably know uh, maternity pay is not full pay throughout at all um, in fact most of it isn't full pay so you know there's a pay cut that you have to take into consideration now when you're thinking about maternity leave and what you can and you can't do or paternity leave um, the first thing you probably need to do is to figure out what your company offers you as an employee so if you're working for a company speaking to your HR going through the policy is something that you should do Pretty much, I think, when you find out you're pregnant, um, I think it's good to know from the beginning how things are. Um, you know, it will be dependent on many things. It will be dependent on the company's policies. It will be dependent on how long maybe you've been working there. So if you've only been there for six months, you may not actually qualify for the um, enhanced maternity pay package. So you need to kind of familiarise yourself with what it is that you could get personally. Same with paternity leave. Um, you need to familiarise yourself with what you could get. So as an example, for me personally, at my company, they have an enhanced maternity pay package. So the first six weeks, which is standard across the UK, you get 90% of your earnings. Um, so that's pretty much everyone will get that. And then afterwards at my company, the next 20 weeks is 50% of my pay. And then on top of that, I get the SP pay. So that's not too bad at all. And then the following 13 weeks, I will get the SMP pay only. And then there'll be 13 weeks of no pay at all. So I've basically learned that I need to stagger out the stages, see how much I'm going to be getting in each stage, and then kind of working forwards or backwards like that. So today I'm going to go through some tips on what I am currently doing or what I've done already to prepare for this, to plan for this. Um, but I will also do a completely separate video on how I've actually budgeted for it, like what approach I have taken. So if you are interested in hearing more about that um, or learning more about that, then do make sure to subscribe and also hit that bell notification um, because then you'll get notified when I upload it. So yeah, I hope this will be helpful to you, especially if you have no idea where to start um, I looked for a few videos like this actually a couple of months ago and I did find some um, there are some out there there aren't as many as I thought there would be so I'm hoping to add to this space to help those of you who are really looking for this information so I've broken it down into seven points you don't necessarily have to do anything in a chronological order do it as you please but it's just to help me talk through the different steps so the first step that I talked about, which I spoke about at the beginning, was to of course find out how much SMP or maternity um, enhanced pay you would get at, from your company, from your employer. Once you've figured out what it is that you're entitled to, um, you can then go on the government website to find out exactly what is SMP. So SMP is, uh, stands for statutory maternity pay and it's paid for up to 39 weeks. So as I said, pretty standard across the board. For the first six weeks, you will get 90% of your average weekly earnings before tax. Um, and then for the following 33 weeks, you would either get £156.66 pence per week or 90% of your average weekly earnings, whichever is lower. So it gives you an idea roughly 
of what that would be normally a bit more than four weeks in a month but say there's four weeks in a month it would be roughly 626 pounds per month that you would be getting if you don't have enhanced maternity pay and you are just on statutory maternity pay also important to remember that just because you are on uh, SMP, it doesn't mean that you won't pay tax and national insurance, it will still be deducted. So you have to take that into consideration as well. If you are somebody who is self-employed or you have not been at your company long enough to qualify for maternity leave um, for SMP, then there is something called the maternity allowance, which you may be entitled for. So let's quickly have a look. So maternity allowance is a payment you can get when you take time off to have a baby. So you could get it if you are employed, but you cannot get SMP. If you are self-employed, if you have recently stopped working, or if you take part in unpaid work for the business of your spouse or civil partner. So it kind of actually works the same way. So you get 39 weeks of maternity allowance, which is the same as the SMP, which is 33 weeks um, just on SMP. And then the first six weeks would be on 90% of your pay. So it works out the same. Um, so if this is something that you know you're worrying about you're thinking i'm not going to be entitled to smp definitely have a look to see if you are entitled to the maternity allowance so the second step or thing to consider is once you've figured out all of this package what you're going to get is to actually plug it into a maternity pay calculator so you get an idea of what that's going to look like on a monthly basis this was some this was the second step that i took um, and I use the maternity money calculator. Um, I think it's a great website to give you an idea of what it will look like. I will just quickly show you an example. So I'm on the home page right now, but I'm going to just try out the calculator to calculate the maternity leave take home pay. So let's just say that this baby is due on the 1st of December 2022. Let's say I have a annual salary of £50,000 then I can say calculate my maternity leave, my maternity pay and it shows me what my current pay is per month after taxes and deductions and then it will show me what will happen as of December. You'll see that the pay goes down slightly from £2,933 to £2,490 um, and then it shows you each month it fluctuates I guess depending on how many weeks are in the month it's going to fluctuate on what you get and then you can see that the last three months you actually will get zero pay based on the general statutory maternity pay now what's great about this is you can put in a start date of when you want to take your maternity leave so say the baby is due on the 1st of december you may want to take off two weeks before that for instance so let's say on the 15th of uh, November 2022, you want to start your maternity leave, it will now take that into consideration. And then you can choose what or specify what maternity pay you get. So if it's just SMP, you would click SMP. If it's maternity allowance, you can click that. If you've got an occupational maternity pay, you can click that. A teacher's maternity pay, and then you can put in your custom plan. So for me personally, as I said, with my company, it's a custom plan. So I put that in, for instance, and then I can edit the plan, um, and it shows you in the different stages. So for instance, for me, uh, the first six weeks, how long in weeks does this stage last? What do you get? I get percentage of my pay, which is 30%. Add stage and then the second stage is 20 weeks and I get statutory maternity pay plus the percentage of my pay which is 50% add stage then for the next stage I get 13 weeks of just SMP add stage and then for the last 13 weeks actually I don't even need to add that because I don't get paid for the last 13 weeks so all my stages have added in now and I can do that and it's going to adjust for me. So now I can see what my maternity pay will actually be throughout the time. So you can see it's gone up a bit because I would get 50% of my pay plus SMP. So it's gone up, then I go on to SMP, then I go on to 13 weeks of no pay. So it's a great little calculator to see what it is that you can budget ahead. And obviously I talk about budgeting a lot on this channel um, and it's something that's just completely transformed my life. So if you want to get an idea of how to budget, I've got loads of videos on, on that and I'll plug the playlist below. Um, but if you can budget for the whole year, I would totally go for it.
The third thing is for you to consider your options and what is it exactly that you want to do. So now that you know what you'll be getting um, in terms of pay, do you want to take six months maternity leave, nine months? Do you want to take the full 12 months? Um, do you want to take less than that? You know, do you want to do a shared parental leave? So do you want to take some maternity leave and your partner take some leave? How, how is it that you want to function it? And this is something that's really important to figure out ahead of time before baby comes. You'll also want to maybe figure out what it is that you want to do with your annual leave. So while you are on maternity pay, you are still entitled to accrue your annual leave as you usually do. So if you get 25 paid uh, annual leave days per year, for instance, you need to decide what you want to do with that. Do you want to use it as part of your maternity leave? So on that 12th month, you actually get your full pay again? Or do you want to tack it on at the end so that you get 13 months off? Or do you want to kind of hold on to it and speak to your employer and see that if you can go back to work and maybe take a day off here and there, so maybe take off Fridays for a set amount of time to use up that annual leave? It depends on what you want to do, your preferences, what your employer will allow you to do. Um, but again, I think this is something that's important to do before the baby comes and to figure out what your plan is. The fourth thing that I would say is to check what you are entitled to or check your benefits. So depending on your situation now, uh, before you even start maternity leave, it can determine what you can get during maternity leave. So here's an example of some benefits that you may be able to get while you're on maternity pay. So um, you may be able to get universal credit, you may be able to get child benefit, child tax credit, working tax credit or income support. You could even get a £500 Sure Start maternity grant if it's your first child, but also you're only really entitled to this if you are already receiving some kind of benefit beforehand. So if you are receiving benefits, you may be able to get this, but if you're not receiving benefits, then you won't be entitled to this £500 grant. Things like child benefit don't start until um, the baby is here. So once your child is here, then you are entitled to child benefit. It works out to £21.80 per week for the eldest or only child. And then for additional children, it's £14.45 uh, per week for each additional child. This is a great benefit. I think that is really handy for people to have. But do take into consideration if you are a higher earner. So if you are, if you or your partner earn fifty thousand pounds, between fifty to sixty thousand pounds, technically um, you'll be paying some sort of tax on that child benefit. So it tapers away how much you're actually getting. But at the moment that you earn over sixty thousand um, pounds, one of you earns over sixty thousand pounds, then you lose it altogether. So there's no point of you trying to claim child benefit if you earn over £60,000 or if your partner earns over £60,000. And this doesn't necessarily fall under benefits, but another thing to consider is your keep in touch days. So I'm not sure if all companies offer this, I think maybe, but check if your company offers kit days or keep in touch days. This is time that you can take, so usually it's 10 days during your maternity leave that you can keep in touch at work, do some form of work and get paid for it on top of your maternity pay. So it's a great way to earn a bit of money while you're on maternity leave and you can kind of structure it so that maybe on the months that you aren't getting any pay, you can maybe do your 10 keep in touch days so that you've got some form of income coming in at that time. For me personally, it's an absolute no brainer. I will totally be using my 10 kit days. Um, when I'll be using them, I'm not sure, but I've already spoke to my manager about this and this is something that I think will be important for me to do. The fifth thing is calculating how much money you need in order to buy everything that's needed for your baby. Now, if you're like me and it's your first time child, then you probably have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. So, you know, it was something that we had to take into consideration into our finances, all the things that we need to buy, um, even practically things like my car won't fit a car seat realistically. So that's another expense that we now have to consider. But it's really important to have a rough estimate of what you need to save in order to buy the stuff for your baby. Now, of course, you can go as simple or as extravagant as you want. There are people who will put things on their list that maybe you don't need and you won't actually 
ever use, but it's that feeling of a first child, maybe that's what you want to do. Or you can just keep it simple, speak to family and friends and see what's actually needed and make a pretty simple list and calculate from there. Another thing that I would say though, is really make use of family and friends, their advice. If they've got any secondhand stuff that they're willing to give you, that is appropriate for secondhand stuff. So certain things are not appropriate for secondhand use. Um, like a baby's mattress, for instance, in their cot. You shouldn't really use that. Uh, that should be secondhand. But, um, you know, certain things you could think, actually, I could use that, like a bottle warmer. You could use that as a secondhand gift. Also, if you aren't interested in baby showers, then, you, then you're not interested. But personally for me, if it's your first child, I think it's a great way to um, allow your family and your friends to contribute to this child's life and to take some of the pressure off of you financially of all the many, many things that you'll need to buy for your baby. The sixth thing to consider is to calculate how much you can save between now and when the baby arrives, or to calculate how much you can save once the baby is here in those first few months where your maternity pay may be a bit higher and how you can uh, budget that out over the last few months where the maternity pay is lower. So it depends on your, your circumstance, your situation. For us personally, because um, multiple things, um, our budget has really been eaten by basically our renovation for this year and now we needing to get a new car and still trying to reach our financial goals. So um, we've structured it that the first, I think, six months of my pay, we take out a, a portion of our pay each month um, to go towards maternity savings, basically. So for the months that my maternity pay is lower, we've saved enough to cover it, essentially. So it depends how you want to do it, how you want to structure it. Um, but again, this is something that I think is really important to have foresight on. Once the baby's here, you're not really gonna to wanna to be focusing on this, or if you have to focus on it, it's gonna be a bit of a stressful situation. So it's something that should be done beforehand. The seventh point I would say in conclusion of all of this is after you've really looked at everything possible, all benefits, all maternity pay, um, you know, how you're gonna do it, really solidify, okay, how long am I taking off? Because you need to kind of let your employer know before you go on maternity leave what your plan is. You can change it during your maternity leave. Um, if you want to come back early, for instance, you can let your employer know with notice. However, I think it's still good to have an idea of how long you think you can take after you've calculated everything. Um, and also, you know, what bills is it that you need to cover during that time? And as I said at the beginning, because of this cost of living crisis right now, um, you do need to think about not just how much things cost right now, but how much they're likely to cost um, as of October or next year, because things are just going up in price essentially. And then of course, it's to think about what the other household income will be and how that will play a role in how much time you can take off. So if you are a single parent, then there is no other household income. So you have to just figure it out based on your own income. But if you are a joint household income, then taking that into consideration um, and thinking about how you need to rejig things, maybe your partner needs to pick up more time at work or whatever else it may be, um, really thinking about that and having those really important discussions before um, yeah, things get crazy. So I hope that today's video has been helpful for you, for those of you who've just been looking for a bit of motivation on where to start, on tips to consider. Um, these are the things that basically I've done and really figured out. Um, and now I feel pretty good. We have a plan. We know what we're doing. So it's not something that feels stressful or burdensome. Um, but as I said, I will do a separate video to show you a bit more about my budgeting approach and what I'm planning to do. So yeah, that is it for today. Please hit the like button if you liked it because it just helps support the algorithm and it will also help get this video out there to more people who need this type of content. So thank you so much for watching today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video real soon.